Hey guys, just a reminder, this is not official medical advice or such. Please seek an appointment with a licensed medical provider. Hi, this is Dr. Tom Rogers coming to you with a weekly podcast of the Common Sense MD. Today I'm going to talk about something very important, screening for colon cancer. There's a new test called the Cologuard Plus test, and we're going to talk about colonoscopies. Which should you choose? Colorectal cancer is the second leading cause of cancer deaths in the United States. It's number one for men, number two for women. Over 153,000 are diagnosed each year in the United States with colon cancer. Over 53,000 die from it yearly here. And it's occurring in younger people. We're seeing more and more younger people get colon cancer. And that's why all the cancer screening societies recommend that we have changed the age where it used to be 50, now it's 45. Age 45 is when you need to start getting your screening for colon cancer sooner if you have certain risk factors, as we'll talk about. I think out of all the cancer screenings, it's the most effective for preventing unnecessary deaths. Yet only 40% of adults over 45 are current with screening, and less than half of adults from age 50 to 54 are current, only 17% in the 40 to 49 age group. The reason it's so important is that early detection of these precancerous lesions like polyps and dysplasia and other types of lesions, you can find them and cure the cancer before it gets out of hand. The reason I'm doing this podcast is because of a new tool to diagnose colon cancer and even precancerous polyps and lesions. And it's recently been approved. It's FDA approved. It's called the Cologuard Plus test. It's even more accurate than the old Cologuard, which was accurate. The first ones we had back when I first started practicing medicine 40 years ago, we used to do a sigmoidoscopy and occult blood screenings. And those sigmoidoscopies where you just could visualize the lower third of the colon, which we thought most of the cancers occurred in, and that was wrong. You need to look at the entire colon when screening for colon cancer. And there's way better stool tests now than just the occult blood test. So then they came up with something called a FIT test, and that's a more accurate test than the old just a cult blood test. There's a reason why you need to get these because you may not be able to see blood. You usually can't see microscopic blood in your stool, which can be a sign of colon cancer. So these detect it before you can see it. The improved FIT test, of course, was more accurate than all the occult blood, like I said. And then came the Cologuard several years ago, and now the Cologuard Plus. And this test is really a combination of two types of markers. One is like the FIT test, which is an advanced assay of hemoglobin, which is blood. And the other part of it detects epigenetic DNA changes by an aberrant gene promoter. Methylation comes into play here. It gets complex, and I'm not going to explain it here. It's very complicated. But a certain gene gets hypermethylated in colorectal cancer, and these genius biochemists figured out how to detect these markers, and they're very accurate in detecting colon cancer and polyps. So who should do a Cologuard Plus test, and who should do a colonoscopy? That is the question. There's no doubt that colonoscopy is the gold standard. And here are the people who should definitely do the colonoscopy. Personal history of colon cancer or polyps, of course, or suspicious lesions. A positive result from an occult blood test, like the FIT test or a Cologuard test, of course. A family history of first-degree relative with colon cancer. By first-degree relative, I mean parent, sibling, or child. And remember, say your dad was diagnosed at age 50 with colon cancer. You need to do your screening 15 years previous to that date. So if he was 50, you need to start screening at age 35. Other people who should do colonoscopy, a personal history of inflammatory bowel disease, like ulcerative colitis or Crohn's. And there's other hereditary conditions that predispose you to colon cancer, like familial polyposis called Gardner's syndrome. But there's others. Or if you have rectal bleeding, obviously you need to get a colonoscopy, unless it's, you're certain that it's a, an external hemorrhoid or internal hemorrhoid. Personally, I think it's the ideal first screening at age 45. If you had the ideal, you would get a colonoscopy at 45. However, for low-risk patients, this new Cologuard Plus test may be the option of choice at age 
45 for a lot of people, especially if you don't, you're not going to get a colonoscopy. Now realize that a negative Cologuard test needs to be repeated every three years compared to every 10 years for a completely normal colonoscopy without polyps, without a family history. How accurate is the Cologuard? It's 95% sensitive and 94% specific, and that's good. Colonoscopies are a little bit better than that, but not by a whole lot. Now remember, it's not quite as sensitive for polyps as direct visualization through a colonoscopy. And the thing about a colonoscopy, when you find a polyp, you snip it out, and then it can be out right there when you get the biopsy done. One problem I'm starting to notice is that there's an increased incidence of missing cancers with colonoscopies. I've seen two this year, and it's been devastating to those patients. Why is this? Is it these turbo cancers we're seeing as a result of COVID or perhaps the COVID vaccines? It's hard to prove. I personally think that they perform these tests too fast. I've heard unofficially that they can do them in seven minutes. And you realize that when they have a positive Cologuard, they take an average of 14 minutes to do them, twice as long. So they're looking a little bit harder. It's just interesting. So they're just lined up to do them. I mean, they, they do a lot of these, a ton of them, and justifiably so. People need screening. And with colonoscopies, of course, complications can happen. They're rare, but they can happen, like perforation, infection, and problems with the anesthesia. I've seen each of these happen in my patients. But again, they're rare. One recent patient I talked to had an anaphylactic reaction to the propofol, which is a wonderful anesthetic. But this patient happened to have severe anaphylactoid reactions to egg whites, which is and think the flu shot here too, which is a direct contraindication to the use of propofol. So take a lesson from this. Always tell your anesthesiologist everything you're allergic to. So here we have this new improved way to screen for this common horrible cancer. It's safe, accurate, and simple. There's no risk to doing a Cologuard plus test. 84% of people screened have negative results and require no follow-up colonoscopy. And over 96% of patients are covered by their insurance with zero copay for this procedure. And you do it at your convenience, at your house. The adherence rate for screenings is much greater than for colonoscopies. For me, I've had two colonoscopies, and I think I'm done doing colonoscopies. The last one I did was a Cologuard. I'm 70 years old, so that's the way I'm going unless I have symptoms or some suspicious that I need a col colonoscopy. There's no prep. And that's a miserable part, miserable part of a colonoscopy is really the prep. There's no missed work or vacation days, and there's no risk. You know, whichever way you choose, please get screened. The important thing here is that you need screening. You need to be screened for colon cancer. It's just so, it's so important that you do this. I can't emphasize this more because I've seen some preventable deaths occur with just people that ignore their screening procedure. So whether you do a colonoscopy, which is still the gold standard, or this new Cologuard Plus, please, at age 45, sooner if you have risk factors or any symptoms, please get screened for colon cancer. So stay tuned for this. I'll see you next week. Thank you.